Oregon Custom is an abbreviation of the original company that I started, which was Oregon Custom Golf Works. Um, I actually started this business, uh, we were building golf clubs, and uh, I really enjoy working with, with wood and making pipes and pens. Hi, I'm Ken Adams. I'm with Oregon Custom, and we do engraving, we make pipes, pens, stamps, all kinds of stuff. Really undersold it there. Sorry, I just, you know. We... So how bad do you hate being on camera? Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Does it show? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my shop is uh, located a very long commute of 75 feet behind my home in Medford, Oregon. Um, this is a picture of my mom and dad and my sister and I with the airplane that he uh, built in our garage when I was a kid growing up. I spent a lot of hours helping him with that. And, um, so. Have you ever been accused of being MacGyver? <laughs> yes, and Martha Stewart all at the same time. <laughs> MacGyver Stewart? Uh, something like that, yeah. <laughs> I like to think of myself as a renaissance man. <laughs> Craftsman is someone who takes raw material and turns it into this. So you work with metal and wood and engraving. Of all the mediums, what do you like the most? Not to say the wood. The wood, uh, it changes. You know, you might begin a project, like say on a pipe, you have an idea of how it's going to be. Um, you have an idea of, of what you want it to look like, but as you get into cutting into the wood, you realize that it's turning into something else. Um, a lot of that's dictated by the wood, just the grain of the wood, and what other little flaws might be hidden in there that you didn't see. Is it a skill you can learn? I think you can learn the technical aspects of working with wood, but to truly, um, <clears throat> to actually turn something into a piece of art, I think that's just kind of uh, a, uh, a th an innate thing that, that either you have or you don't. I mean, I look at my son, he's very mechanical, but he doesn't have a lot of the art side, where my daughter um, has a lot of the art side. I'd say the difference between a hack and a craftsman is attention to detail. Um, the little details are what can take something from just being a mediocre product to uh, a very, very elegant item that you'd want to pass down from generations to generations. I posted a picture of this on the Pipe Makers News Group and uh, told the story and all I got was a wow in response. <laughs> <laughs> so everything you see I make from the bags that I uh, dye sublimate to putting my signature on them with the year and the pipe number from that year to the pipe that actually is inside. And the pipes start out as a block of wood and a piece of lucite or ebonite rod. And then through hours of work, we turn them into these. This is a pipe that uh, kind of evolved over a couple of month period uh, I had this basic design here in my head and wanted to figure out how to incorporate it into a pipe. So over a period of two months, just kind of working on it a little bit and putting it down, working on it a little bit more, it kind of evolved into this. This shape carries on down through the stem also and then rotates out to, down to the bit. It just kind of, it fits right into the crook of your hand and it just... Everybody that's picked it up just says, man, that's surprising how comfortable that is. But currently I have what I'm calling the Nimrod Project. It's where I'm taking an old pipe lighter that was built in the 1940s uh, in a factory that actually built parts for the Nimrod fighter 
planes in World War II. And they started to create these lighters that kind of look like a nut and a bolt. So I'm kind of reworking them, adding some wood, making them a little more interesting. Have you ever been called a Nimrod? <laughs> <laughs> in my youth, yes. <laughs> I'm called. <laughs> um, well, recently, Martha MacGyver. <laughs> Uh, before that, just MacGyver. Um, there was a period where I was known as Dirty Ken. <laughs> fountain pens. Um, fountain pens is kind of a, a dying art. A lot of people don't write anymore. With the advent of the computer, they te tend to just shoot emails. And, and actually writing is, um, you know, it, it is a dying art form. So fountain pens kind of brings you full circle back to that. So these pens start out as just a square block of wood. That's how they begin. And after a couple hours, we end up having one that looks like this as a finished product. Collected, um, acquired, salvaged from burn piles, everything from, this is an English walnut down here that are cut in and ready to uh, turn into pens. Um, from there we move into, uh, oh, like here's a chunk of lignum, it's a, uh, what's known as bearing wood, it's very oily but it's super hard. Um, this is, uh, that's olive wood from olive tree. Um, here's part of some poor elk left his horn here. Arizona ironwood. You can't even uh, can't get that uh, legally. You can't cut it. You can only uh, pick up what's already been knocked down. Somewhere in here, I've even got a part of a, a main spar of a boat that uh, was African mahogany that had been salvaged. Uh, you can see my pens and pen boxes at the Oregon State Capitol gift shop, or you can find it online. At. Oregoncustom.com